Yeah, Aiden, you want to talk to us about this uh, competitive gameplay update? What are they talking about? Yeah, so Riot put out a thing today about competitive gameplay mid-year update. So they go over a ton of shit. Uh, the first stuff they talk about is their behavioral systems. Like, hey, how do people get banned? Uh, yada, yada, yada. Like, uh, you guys said that if we if I report people in Champions in, uh, champion Select, it will, like, be, uh, get them, like, fucked up or whatever. Um, so they pretty well said, like, in general, they're doing a better job at, like, calling out AFKs and, like, uh, um, dodging and stuff like that. They're trying to fix all those issues. Um, one of the biggest things is that they said, hey, our in-champion select reporting doesn't really do shit. <laughs> uh, wow. uh, they're like, they say, like, we've talked about this over the last time, about nine months. We, we said it was coming. Unfortunately, we, have, we haven't been able to make this, a prom this promise a reality. Uh, so currently, we're looking at uh, what we can do to hook up champion select reports to post-game report categories and penalties. Uh, so I don't know why the fuck they can't get, if I report someone for trolling me in champion select to get them, like, like banned or whatever but apparently that doesn't yeah. work so that that's a weird thing i, I they don't really explain why mm -hmm. it doesn't work um maybe it's like back end stuff but it feels like a very easy thing that even if you don't ban them just like have it go on the record of like hey a ton of people have been reporting this person so mm -hmm. therefore if they get reported post game the penalty is probably a little more severe like anything like that I, I feel like would be a good system i think that it's probably like really tough to figure out the weighting and then mm -hmm. like how it's going to interact where it's like uh, how does a lobby report interact with an AFK report versus an intentional feeding versus like a hate speech report? Like mm -hmm. how do those interact? A at the very least, I imagine that they're at least smart enough that they're like storing this data on these reports and that once they have a system, they can at least like use that data to test it and, and look into it a little more. Yeah. Um, you know, I would I would hope that they don't then jump back and be like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna ban you for something that happened a year and a half ago." But yeah, uh, I mean, even if they do, uh, you know, if it's a justified report and a justified ban, whatever, don't be toxic. Yeah, and like overall, there. I think all their systems are like pretty good for the most part. I I feel like I very often when I report someone, will get a instant feedback report in the next like day or two. Uh, they have talked about how like their systems are getting stronger at like, for example, if you if someone's like typing hate speech or something like that, um, if they AFK in a game, previous reports of like something like hate speech will help speed up them getting banned for like AFK mm, or whatever, right? So like if they're if they're AFK like and th but they're also just a toxic shitbag. It was like, hey, this person probably AFK'd because he's like a lunatic, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is a system they don't have fully rolled out, but they're planning on rolling out um, by the end of the year, I think they said here. Um, it's, it's really cool. I, I think overall, League does pretty a good job with like reporting and stuff like that. Definitely some issues with like the AFKs and uh, stuff like that and just like the yeah. remake accounts and stuff. But overall, I think they've been constantly improving. They're pretty like open with explaining their process and stuff. So it's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, next, they talk about in like their actual ranked like matchmaking. Um, they're pretty happy with how it currently is. Usually, games have um, everyone within like one division of each other, which is really really good. I definitely get some whack games sometimes, like maybe like one in fifty games. It's just like you're in a completely different elo for some reason. Um, but for the most part, it's like been pretty good. I haven't really noticed any like crazy elo disparities or anything. Um, so it seems like they're doing a pretty good job. Uh, with that, we're, we're also on, like, a lower population server, so I think they're, it's probably a lot harder to matchmake you for that. Um, they also go into talking about dynamic position popularity and autofill. Um, they're potentially going to reduce autofill rates as low as 0.6% uh, of all games, currently at 2, point, uh, 2 to 5%, which is a huge reduction. Hopefully that will, like, go live soon. That would be huge. Um, and this change will allow them to reduce queue times by up to 10% across all MMRs. I would love 10% reduced queue time on my 5-minute queue. That would be so fucking sick. Um, hmm. They definitely do have some issues. Like, sometimes you definitely do get into lobbies where, like, you have, like, three people autofilled that could just switch roles or whatever. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's like obviously there's something there that's not going right. So hopefully if this rolls out properly, um, we'll see a lot better like uh, actual like matchmaking with like autofills and dynamic positioning and stuff like that. So nice, good. Sounds like they're committed to improving the quality of ranked, which is yep. uh, important. <laughs> yeah. The other things they talk about is that they're going to keep uh, increasing their pre-made skill balance because they want if you're like a pre-made, they want the other team to have a pre-made as well because it turns out it's very very useful to have uh, 
pre-mids yeah, on your absolutely. team definitely inflates your elo a little bit um they also talk about dynamic map advantage so blue side typically in like i remember the good old days where blue side just had like a 52 percent win rate all the time mm-hmm. like in season yeah. one league of legends they've done stuff like creating like a little bit of like a map offset and settings and stuff like that um but obviously based on how patches are say if dragon's really really strong it's definitely beneficial to be on blue side because you have an easier way to steal dragon right because you can steal it mm-hmm. from behind the wall um so they said they're going to look at this on like a patch to patch basis and see if they need to adjust um matchmaking because the way currently the way they currently do it is uh red side will always have higher mmr than blue side because blue side has a higher uh percentage win rate based on just side advantage um but for example if dragon's like uber strong one patch and like blue side's win rate is like say 53 percent or whatever they'll just uh make it so red side just has even slightly better players than they currently do interesting they're just trying to make it so it's a fair game because there are advantages that they can't fix they're just systematic advantages um they're not gonna hmm. nerf dragon because blue side's win rate is too strong right um but it, it's interesting I'm, I'm really happy that they talk about stuff like this um on to other stuff they talk about rank decay hey nick uh it sounds like we're gonna get a change where diamond players don't have to play four games a month because that's fucking Augers. ridiculous uh they it is ridiculous to- <laughs> I, I was thinking about the other that the other day it is not like i i love league of legends but mm-hmm. i don't want to play a ranked game a week <laughs> it feels like we're not at the elo where it's like we exactly need to be grinding this game to play competitively yeah. or whatever yeah um they talk about how like uh master tier plus and high diamond players um are hopefully in the future gonna be able to take a couple weeks off from playing league uh without <laughs> uh decaying like so far because in master tier you have to play a game a day stacking up to 10 games each game stacks one game or each day mm-hmm. stacks one game uh or other way around but um so hopefully it'll be like maybe like 14 days for Master Tier and maybe like each game stacks two and maybe for Diamond you still will it'll go back to like the one game a month because playing four is a little a little wacko or even it's if it lot. like stacked yeah. um 14 days rather than seven days per game in Diamond I think that'd be fine yeah. as well just something that's like yeah. a little bit more reasonable. I, I think there's also like uh, the system is right there at, at the very top to keep people from like Elo camping. And then I think they eventually put it in diamond to like try and stop people from sitting at, at D4 forever and ever and mm-hmm. ever without ever playing. But like, it's such a hard thing to do. And I think that again, it's, it's hard to make a determination of like, right. Cause you can just play the bare minimum to keep your thing. And then you're still kind of just camping. Yeah. But I, I don't, yeah, it's, it's a really weird thing. Cause obviously it's, it's really frustrating to be in a game with somebody who's like, Hey, this is my one game of two weeks, and I haven't and I haven't been playing at all. Yeah, like enjoy. it's not their fault either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like enjoy, let's let's enjoy this loss together so that I don't have to play again because this loss affects me. You know, it is a positive when compared to the alternative. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's 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 a weird system. They talk about a really interesting thing that we don't really have much detail on. They talk about uh like social like ranked leagues. So. If you like click on your ranked league and you you can scroll up and see like for example if I scroll up to master tier in my league I can see Trevor because like I play with him a lot or if I scroll down I can probably see Nick in like D three or D four or whatever you're in on one of my accounts Nick because we're on our yeah. friends, friends list but then there's yeah. just a ton of people that I have no idea who the fuck these people are just and I don't know why yeah. I can see them <laughs> so they're planning on making a thing so when you're in ranked lobby you can see the progress of all your friends like maybe you compared to all your friends in like one big friends list leaderboard which oh. i think is cool um who knows how this will actually be done but i think it's a cool idea if like you just had a rank leaderboard of everyone on your friends list that would be a cool way of doing it I think. yeah that would be cool it's a little bit better be than awesome. just a bunch of randoms <laughs> a bunch of randoms in timo's vanguards <laughs> yeah so hopefully that's a cool change and then the last thing is they talk about competitive rewards um so the only thing i don't like here is they're talking about flex so flex is gonna have different sets of chromas than solo queue and duo queue this season okay so um i'm assuming they're gonna do their like gold plat diamond whatever uh chromas so there'll probably be like a different version of all those chromas for flex queue so uh interesting make sure you get your flex rewards this season because they're gonna get something uh a little different hmm God, and we then, gotta get the boys back together run some flex so. yeah we'll get the boys back together too bad we can't queue with four people and we don't have five we'll have to get quinn yeah um, yeah we'll have to get quinn and buy five and end the chains. yeah uh, we've got a couple of listeners who are high low yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the last thing is the clash rewards they want to make clash rewards feel like something that's actually like earned so you'll be able to showcase them off a little bit more they don't really know how they're going to do it but uh they might have like an award case or like something for like banners and stuff like that to showcase because currently it's like hey 
I got my Clash trophy, and then it kind of sits on Summoner's Rift sometimes, but I'm not sure yeah. if it cho- how it chooses which one. I'm not sure. It's very strange, but either way, they're trying to make you feel good about your accomplishments, and I think it's a good uh, direction. Hell yeah. Awesome. Uh, awesome. 